So, PewDiePie decided that, now that the subscribe to PewDiePie meme has hit its peak, he would make a video called Don't Subscribe to PewDiePie, which ends with Pewds recommending a bunch of channels he enjoys, from Dark Souls channels, to political commentary channels, to meme channels. A lot of really solid stuff is on there, with channels ranging from 20,000 subscribers to 400,000 subscribers. During the video, he recommends one channel in particular that drew a bunch of outrage online about how PewDiePie is apparently supporting a Nazi propagator, and how this one channel he recommends checking out was just another sign that PewDiePie was actually a Nazi. No matter what he says to the contrary, let's take a look, shall we, and see why Twitters, and doubtlessly other people going forward, are so upset. I don't know. We also have ER, who does great video essays about... Uh, he did one on uh, Death Note, which I really, really enjoyed. Is that...? No. No, that's not possible. No one's supposed to know about him. Is this... THE E semicolon R? You know what would be a great movie for the title, Get Out? A sequel to Pacific Rim, in which a portal breach opens on the U.S.-Mexico border, and the U.S. government revitalizes the Jaeger program to protect the border wall from the illegal aliens. Today we face the monsters that are at our door! Instead, we got this. You absolute bastard! What are you doing here? I guess Pew must enjoy some solid criticism mixed with dark humor and excessive political perspectives on various media. ER also has a pretty nice voice too. Oh Jesus, wait, he's the problem child here! One of the other channels that he shouted out was a channel called E semicolon R, a channel that has a video that literally features four minutes of uninterrupted footage from a speech Hitler gave. Okay, listen. I don't like E, semicolon, R's, and just for the sake of keeping things short, I'm gonna call him ER for the rest of this. Comedy a lot of the time. He's got a dry brand of sarcasm, and honestly, I think some of his jokes are more uncomfortable than they are funny. But I don't think any of his Nazi allegations are anywhere close to accurate. ER is a reviewer that focuses on incorporating edgy humor in politics, on top of a fairly solid critical review of various movies, games, and shows. His catalog is limited in scope, with multiple videos focused on the same thing, such as the over eight videos related to The Legend of Korra. Like, jeez, why did you do so much? But it's really the style of ER's humor that's causing the controversy here. ER has a tendency of using Nazi jokes, racist jokes. When I first looked into Get Out, honestly, I was intrigued. A horror movie starring a pair of floating eyeballs in the main role was a bold choice by Peel. And whatever other edgy jokes you can think of. All I wanna do is help you turn into a giant mega faggot. He's toned it down a lot in his most recent videos, particularly in the Death Note series, but never fret! He's still as edgy as ever! We're hitting the last airbender levels of race bending that shouldn't even be possible. Now guess which race the majority of Deathflix's producers directly responsible for the race bending are? It's no, not what you're thinking, you fucking n-words. The ones obstructing Asians from Hollywood are Asians! That's the thing, he's an edgy boy, these are jokes. ER's comedy can sometimes go so far and be so purposely offensive for little to no reason sometimes. And now these are just programmable humans. Which is a shame because retconning the stormtroopers to all be young black men would have made total sense as to why they can't shoot for shit. Oh! But they're always jokes. Even if they can go a bit too far from my tastes, I still know they're a joke. While his political ideology puts him constantly at odds with the progressive movement, he has no intentions of genuinely pushing people towards Nazism, racism, or any other form of ism you can really think of. He's made shocking and offensive jokes. That's all. It's just the way he does humor. Alex, you gotta bring us both down! Ah! Ah, Steven, you better hold on! One, Uncle Andy, you sure are good at. Do you have any idea what could have happened? It's not too late. The truth about why this took so long is because I thought it was funny to call Black L N word lit throughout all of my recordings, obviously, because it was an ingeni ingenious pun on lawlet, pronounced lawlet, 
I eventually got through my thick fucking skull that YouTube's looking for any reason. So I redid all the audio to erase my speech crime. But then I got bored and put the project on pause. Now I'm going to finish it. Uh, his Gab account is also on here. And he fucking calls his Patreon the Shameless Shekel Shakedown. Jesus Christo. Listen, it's an edgy joke that's sarcastic and in text. And uh, listen, I have no intentions of going through this entire stream segment and debating all the points here. It's boring and not worth our time. This guy just doesn't get the joke, and that happens. His video, to save you 18 unedited minutes, can be summed up with, ER is edgy, and that makes him a Nazi. And it's an uneducated opinion, to say the least. So I don't know where the original video is. I think that was the one. I think that's the, the original video is the, the rape verse or whatever the fuck. This is, for, this is the original video, I believe, with, with now 2 million views, dude. And clearly this guy hasn't watched ER's video because that's not in Rapeyverse. That's just this edgy video he made on the side. So good to know the guy criticizing ER here hasn't actually seen any of the videos he's complaining about. Freaking brilliant. But what's the point of me making this little video? I see a lot of outrage against PewDiePie and ER right now, and I'm already seeing articles being made about the situation. I feel people should be at least vaguely familiar with who ER is and the truth of the channel before everyone comes out of the woodworks and attacks them. And I hope this video here helped to clear up a couple of things. Now, apparently one of those 28 uh, likes to have hidden and not so hidden Nazi references in his videos. And, you know, obviously if I've noticed that, I wouldn't have referenced in him in the shout out because I said my, not because I have a problem with Nazi references being offensive in themselves, but because I said publicly uh, a year and a half ago that I was going to distance myself from uh, Nazi jokes and that kind of stuff because I want nothing to do with it and I don't really care about it. I guess if I were to summarize this in something that was more concise than the rest of the video, I'd say that ER is an edgy boy that makes a bunch of really stupid jokes and I don't think ER is an actual Nazi and I don't think he's actually recruiting people to be a Nazi. People just want an excuse to call PewDiePie a Nazi again and they're using ER to do it. I've been Summer Vincent. I hope this helped clear up a couple things about E semicolon R. I hope you all have a blessed day. You have the chance to stop the type of people who make things hard for everybody. So why should you get off the hook, Lightling? Because you make doing homework easier for everyone else? Again, making Lightling a baby delinquent is such a terrible narrative decision. Part of why Light's God Complex worked so well was because he crowned the social totem pole. He was a top student in his country, alongside being a model citizen and being the son of a police chief. He could regard himself as righteous because, well, he was righteous, at least to everybody around him. And that was thanks to his own hard work work, principles, and intelligence. It made a twisted sort of sense that Light would consider himself the ultimate solution to the world's ills. Lightling, however, is at the bottom of the social totem pole. His school principal treats him like shit, so we can infer Lightling's no top student nor any model citizen. And he's a bit dim, considering he's ended up in this situation at all. His only claim to righteousness is stepping in to help a girl from a bully, after failing to help the original bully victim so that she had to put herself in the line of fire. Yeah, what a hero. So of course Lightly makes an appeal to authority to show the audience that authority can't be relied upon and that he'll have to take matters into his own ill-equipped hands. You gotta see the big picture here. I can't take him at all seriously. No one could possibly expect or root for this guy to win. Not to mention his crying is just to set up this embarrassingly forced exposition about Mamakami. Some people might look at you, a kid in your situation, losing your mom the way you did, and they'd be willing to cut you a little slack when it comes to these kind of behavioral issues. There were six writers for this movie, and this is the result. Oh, it's not that bad, ER. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, Amon's mask had to come off sometime. If Amon were really what he said on the tin, that would have been boring. Which is just stupid. To want so badly for there to be a last minute twist that any old mediocre twist will do? Amon was a great villain from the start, and there was never a need to unmask him at all. His mask was a symbol, a representation of what he stood for, as twisted as his beliefs may have been. For example, no one sat through the dark night, waiting for the moment that Batman scrubbed the Joker's face clean to uncover his true identity. But Joker stood for chaos, the unrepentant barbarity of man, and how all that held up a mirror to Batman's own actions, that's what made him a great villain. You will complete me. To them, you're just a freak. Like me. 
Darth Vader is another great example of this. He was never a particularly deep or multifaceted villain, but he was everything Luke Skywalker needed to overcome to be a Jedi Knight and save the galaxy. This is precisely why Ozai worked too, despite being about as one-dimensional. Ozai was everything that Aang wasn't, and everything that Aang needed to surpass to come into his own as the Avatar and save the world. The Fire Lord was the classical, power-hungry villain archetype, which happened to be the perfect big baddie for the Avatar narrative. Likewise, Amon held up a mirror to Korra. Benders as a whole might not have been keeping non-benders down, but they certainly had the potential to, and Korra's disgustingly egocentric actions reflected that potential. He was the one thing Bright got right about Legend of Korra, but God forbid they have someone be interesting, so they made him into a masked man wearing makeup.